This is a USGS ha hazard map for the central United States showing the Siri seismic network and some major metropolitan areas in the area. So normally when we see red lines like this in the seismic hazard map, we would see mountains and volcanoes that say this area is seismically active. We don't have that, but if you just look at eight years worth of accurately located earthquakes, these cubes, we can actually see, kind of get an image of the fault. This is a large fault that stretches towards Memphis, uh, about 40 miles away from Memphis. This is the fault uh, the, called the real foot thrust fault. When it ruptured last in 1812, it created the largest natural body of water in the state of Tennessee. So these earthquakes accurately located give us an idea of the size of the fault, and the size of the fault gives us an idea of the maximum credible earthquake that occur could occur on those. One of the most important issues facing scientists in the central United States is to get a good grasp of how energy, seismic energy decreases in the deep crust with increasing distance from the source. We know that the attenuation, the, the loss of energy with increasing distance from the source, is very low here compared to California. So the central United States is like a hard, cold slab that allows seismic energy to travel great distances. As opposed to California, the deep rocks are relatively shattered and hot where uh, seismic energy dies out rather quickly. So when we hear reports from 1811, 1812 that central United States earthquakes were felt 1,200 miles away in Canada, it's, it's very hard for a lot of people to believe. Scientists in the central United States, we have to pinch ourselves too when we think about this. Because in California, you have a large earthquake, it's, it's usually not felt much 250 miles away in Las Vegas. Earthquakes in the central United States are much different. But that also sheds a different light on, the, uh, on our ability to plan. So if a large earthquake occurs here, we don't want to see many different cities and many different states competing for the same resources. So it's important to plan ahead for this kind of high consequence, low probability disaster. They don't happen that often, but when they do happen, they affect much larger areas than similar magnitude events in California.